So this is a little song that sort of introduces myself. Yeah, g'day. I'm Australian. Oh, and I should tell you why I wrote this song. I wrote this song when I did a tour of England a, a few years ago, and I started getting jokes about my name being Bruce from Australia. And when we got over there, the very first gig I did, the, the, the guy came up to me and said, Oh, you're Bruce. And, and I was with my wife, Jill, and he said, Oh, and you must be Sheila. Well, you know. So I knew this was going to happen from the emails that have been going backwards and forwards. And so I thought a bit of preemptive action. So I wrote this song for the English people as an Australian called Bruce. Oh, and it's called The Importance of Being Bruce. Yeah, g'day. I'm Australian and my name is Bruce. Oh. I, oh, I've actually forgotten how the song goes. I'm taking a few lessons from, from Greg Champion on performance, on performance arts. <laughs> yes. <laughs> See if it comes this time. Yeah, g'day. I'm Australian and my name is Bruce. Now I know that that's a cliche, but fair dinkum, it's the truth. Well, you can make your jokes, display your wit, lampoon my name, make fun of it, but you may hurt my feelings just a bit, cause my name is Bruce. Yeah, g'day, I'm Australian, and my name is Bruce. Now that's actually a Scottish name, if you want to know the truth. Bruce was a mighty warrior king, defeating the English was his thing. Me, I love the English and I love to sing, and my name is Bruce. That's just me sucking up to the English audiences there. Yeah, g'day, I'm Australian and my name is Bruce. I read philosophy at Princeton, not the University of Woolloomooloo, and that's actually true. I don't like that Monty Python skit. Its portrayal of our name is inaccurate. It makes us Aussie Bruces feel like shaking our heads in despair. Cause our name is Bruce. Yeah, g'day. I'm Australian. And Bruce is my name. I could be a dick and change it. But to be frank, it wouldn't be the same. It would rob me of my dignity. I'd be shorn of all that makes me me. I'm earnest when I make this plea. I just want to be Bruce. Yeah, g'day. I'm Australian and my name is Bruce. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, are there any other Bruces out there? You lucky people. There are none. <laughs> this next song I wrote uh, when I, well, I had the idea for it when I was climbing a mountain, a mountain in Tasmania, Mount Roland. I don't know if anyone knows it. It's a beautiful place. Um, we have camped there many, many times at Gower Park. There's a sort of nearly free camp there. And we get off the ferry on our, uh, in our van and drive down to um, uh, Gower, Gower, Gowery Park. Gower Park. Now I've forgotten. Anyway, uh, it has this beautiful view of Mount Roland. And so one, one time I had a day to spare and so I decided to climb up it. And it's a great view from there. Uh, it's just a bit south of Devonport. And I noticed that I've done a lot of bushwalking in my time and I noticed that people were starting to pass me, younger people. You know, there seem to be more and more of them around these days. And so at one point I was thinking about, well, I'm getting older. And I sat down and as an excuse to sit down, I thought, well, I'll make myself productive and I, I wrote a little bit of a song. Well, I wrote the chorus and I finished it a, a couple of years later. It actually turned into a love song. It's called These Old Bones. These old bones are tired now and weary. This old back is racked with aches and pain. These old hands may hurt and aren't so steady anymore But this old heart still loves you just the same
When first I looked into your eyes, I felt a tiny spark Lit a fire that kept growing more and more We tended to the embers as the years and seasons passed Now this old flame still burns brightly as before these old bones are tired now and weary This old back is racked with aches and pains These old hands may hurt and aren't so steady anymore But this old heart still loves you just the same A journey of a thousand miles starts with a single step Sometimes we stumble, sometimes bold is dry and Though these feet are blistered long before the journey's end These old legs are still walking by your side These old bones are tired now and weary The so bad Racked with aches and pains These old hands may hurt And aren't so steady anymore But this old heart Still loves you just the same Years roll on Love's first passion may be gone But in its place The warm embrace of lasting love Goes on and on and on These old bones Tired now and weary This old back is racked with aches and pains These old hands may hurt and aren't so steady anymore But this old heart still loves you just the same These old hands may hurt and aren't so steady anymore But this old heart Still loves you just the same. Thank you very much. So this next song is... Um, I don't think there have been any songs this weekend uh, yet about epidemiology, have there, that I have heard? So I figure there's a, there's a gap in the market for, for, for a song about epidemiology. Probably none of you, most of you, maybe all of you, didn't know what epidemiology was uh, about three years ago, but um, chief medical officers and epidemiologists have become the flavour of the year. And um, this, uh, it's a thing that has interested me for a long time. I worked in health, um, health policy uh, for quite a long time and I worked with public health teams uh, in Melbourne. and. Um, as I learned more about that discipline, I became really impressed with the person who really started it all out. And it was a man called John Snow. Now, you've heard of John Snow, but you probably think he's a cricketer or some character in Game of Thrones or something. But the real John Snow was the father of epidemiology. And in a cholera e epidemic in London in the 1850s, he was the one who used maps. And this is another thing, I love maps, love maps. So two things that I love all came together in this song. He used maps to work out what was the cause of, of the cholera epidemic. It wasn't miasma, as had been thought, whatever miasma is. Um, and um, it, it was due to the water. And um, so this is the story of Jon Snow and the map that changed the world. Whoops. That's it. The year was 1855 and all through London town The evil scourge of cholera was spreading all around Soho was the centre and with the outbreak at its peak In that neighbourhood alone 500 died within a week No one knew the cause reason could be found They thought it was my asthma that was rising from the ground The 
Jon Snow was a doctor with a passion for the truth For years he'd had a theory, but he couldn't find the proof So he went down to Soho, determined to discover The facts behind this outbreak that caused so many there to suffer He examined every case where people lived and what they did And then he drew a map and the answer was revealed There was a cluster round the Broad Street pump You could see it on his map Everyone who died had taken water from this tap He left no stone unturned He knocked on every door And determined that contaminated water was the cause Immediately he knew just what should be done So he got the local council to take the handle off the pump Just like turning off a tap, the outbreak stopped right in its tracks. But evil ignorance persisted and the handle was put back. It took many years till what it done was truly understood. And clean water could be guaranteed to London's neighbourhoods. And cholera is now gone from the whole developed world. But elsewhere we must wait until poverty is destroyed. We've so much to thank Jon Snow for and his map that changed the world The father of epidemiology, his story must be told We must remember how he fought for the truth to be heard Cause for many old beliefs and not the facts are preferred And if you think about life's problems, be it health or climate change If you think you know more than the experts, think again Thank you. So when the, when the, um, the COVID pandemic started, I um, did this little thing. I set myself a challenge of writing 30 songs in 30 days. And the last two songs that I've done were, were two that I wrote in that time. And then the next one was as well. And there was a little bit of, they're not songs about, about the pandemic, but they're songs that often were inspired by image, I I issues that were floating around uh, around the time, particularly early on in the pandemic. So epidemiology, obviously. But also, I learnt a lot about um, and started hearing about pangolins during the pandemic, and I didn't really know what they were. And um, so, of course, I went on to Spotify and iTunes, and I found no songs about pangolins either. Why is that? So again, here's another little map, uh, gap in the market. Um, so I wrote a song called, um, What Do You Know About the Pangolin? And what I had to do when I was writing these 30 songs in 30 days, I, I had to have the idea, if it was a song like the one about Jon Snow or this next one about pangolins, I, I had to learn what I was gonna be writing about and then I had to write it. And then because I'd set myself the challenge of doing this every day in public, I, I posted the song each night on, on YouTube, so just to prove that I'd done it, because otherwise you don't do stuff, you know, I don't know, if, if you're like me, if I don't make some sort of public commitment, I'm not going to do it. So I did that, so I had to learn the song well enough and all that sort of thing. So this next one was quite a challenge because there's so many uh, interesting things about pangolins, as you all know very well. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so, yeah, this song is called, What Do You Know About the Pangolin? What do you know about the pangolin? In fact, do you know anything at all? There are so many myths that need some disentangling. Are they reptile, mammal, fish or fowl? And are they big or small? Well, for a start, they are mammals of the order Folidota. The only mammals in the world that are covered in scales When they're threatened, they release an awful foul-smelling odour And their scales are made of keratin, just like our fingernails And they can curl up in a ball, 
just like an armadillo with those scales sticking out their self-protection is enhanced they grow up to one meter weigh as much as 30 kilo with their long sticky tongue they eat termites and ants so what do you know about the pangolin i hope you learned a little bit just now but there's so many myths that need some disentangling are they safe or endangered and if so why and how well there are eight separate species from africa and asia and they've been here on this earth almost a hundred million years but the bad news that i have is that they're critically endangered the illegal wildlife trade couldn't make them disappear because they are hunted for their meat and they're hunted for their scales to treat asthma cure cancer help new mothers with their milk there's no evidence it works but that won't stop illegal sales and they say 100,000 pangolin a year are killed so what do you know about the pangolin i hope you've learned a little more each verse but i've got more to tell so i won't leave you dangling what can we do to save them to stop things getting worse there's lots of speculation that pangolins were the vector that carried COVID-19 to humans from bats. But even if that's true, it's not their fault. They need protection. We shouldn't save them in the markets. We should preserve their habitats. And some say this pandemic was the pangolins' revenge. But they're really cute and cuddly if we don't get in their way. So each year on the third Saturday of February, let's celebrate together, cause that's World Pangolin Day, it really is. So if you've listened to my song about the pangolin, you'll know everything you'd ever need to know. We took some myths and we did some disentangling. And did I mention there's a test at the end of this show? Thank you. Bet you didn't know most of that. They are, are in fact the most illegally traded wildlife uh, animal in the world and um, it, it's a really serious situation. The next thing I'm going to do is um, another one from, from that. And, um, most of these, if not all of them, are on, um, on a new CD that I, I just released at the end of last year. So um, I'd love to um, share this music with you. Uh, if you're interested, um, come and see me after the show. Um, CD is called Year of Wonders. This next one is a song that I'd wanted to write for years. And so setting yourself this sort of challenge, you know, we, we songwriters are often quite lazy people. And uh, setting yourself a challenge like this can mean that you write songs that you've been thinking about for a long, long time. And I'd been thinking about writing a song about, uh, about Normie Rowe for a very, very long time. And it, it, it actually started when I was doing a show with some other people about um, around, around the cent centenary of Anzac Day. And we, we actually got a grant to do songs about local uh, war uh, personalities and heroes from our area, which is the, um, it, was, it was what we call, what used to be called the Batman electorate, and now it's called Cooper uh, in, in uh, the northern, inner northern suburbs of Melbourne. And um, one of those people was actually Normie Rowe. He went to Northcote High School, which is the high school that, that three of our, our kids went to. And, um, and he started his music career uh, singing at the, the Preston Town Hall, which is uh, very, very close to where we live. So there's a little bit of a... Um, and I remember, uh, probably most of you are too young to remember Normie Rowe, um, but for those of you that don't know, he was a pop star in the 60s. And he was drafted to, to serve in Vietnam. And there was, there's a little bit of, um, well, there's quite a lot of suspicion that the draft was rigged. And, and certainly Normie himself believes that that draft was rigged and uh, that they wanted this pop hero to lead the younger generation into supporting the war. And of course, it ended up very badly. He, he served and served very well in Vietnam. And, um, but when, by the time he came back after serving, uh, the tide of opinion had definitely turned against the war. And, and he, 
like most veterans at the time, was spurned by, uh, by his generation. And so he, his pop career was absolutely destroyed. But he um, managed to resurrect a musical career very, very strongly and also become a really fantastic advocate for Vietnam veterans. And um, through writing this song, he's been very nice to me about this song, which is great. And um, I, I'm, I feel like I'm besties uh, with Normie, which is really good. But, so this song, he, he really deserves a song. And um, I, I hope this one um, eh, lives up to what I want it to do. It's called The Ballad of Normie Rowe. He was born on the 1st of February, 1947. A Northcote boy, back in different times. The old pianola was the family's prized possession. Dad drove trucks and mum sang Patsy Cline. He sang tenor in the church choir till he discovered rock and roll. By 13 he hit the stage at the Preston Town Hall. When this mop top kid belted out his songs, his voice was pure gold. And those teeny bopper girls would scream for more He sang shaking all over and Kesera And it ain't necessarily so He was the king of pop The top of the charts, he was a hero Normie Rowe Now over in the USA Elvis was the king He'd been drafted as a soldier for Uncle Sam And a struggling Harold Holt Was looking for a win To justify why we were fighting in Vietnam And when they drew out the marbles With each young man's date of birth Normie's number came up And he served his country well From Pukapunya to Vietnam the king of pop was sent He saw things you shouldn't see And made to fail He was shaking all over Kesera It ain't necessarily so He was the king of pop The top of the charts He was a hero Normie Rowe Back home he faced protesters and post-traumatic stress The king of pop no more He never had a hit again And to this day The question hangs Was that ballad rigged? Was he sacrificed for politicians' gain? But Normie, he was valiant He soldiered on and made the best Playing leagues, clubs Acting on TV He's fought long and hard for the rights of Vietnam vets And he's accepted what will be, will be He sang shaking all over and case around It ain't necessarily so He was the king of pop, the top of the charts He was a hero, Normie Rowe He is a hero, Normie Rowe The Ballad of Normie Rowe. Thank you. You know, I, um, when I, after I wrote that song, I, I, I um, take new songs to a, a little songwriting group, Darabin Songwriters Guild, it's called, and um, there's all sorts of different people there. And there were, the, the, the time I took that song there to the group, it was, um, there was a, a really young person there. She was probably about 20, 21, something like that. And so I thought I should explain uh, who Normie Rowe was. And she said, no, that's all right. No, no, we learned about him in history. <laughs> so there you go. Um, this is another um, true story about a remarkable person. It's actually the mother of a, uh, a really good long-time friend of mine. And uh, she grew up in, in Warsaw and she lost all her family uh, in the Holocaust. And 
she and her husband survived by, by working in a, in a German factory. And um, he told me the story and he asked me if I could write a song about it, which is a pretty hard ask, but um, uh, I did. And um, the, the amazing thing about this song, it's a totally true story, but it's only one of literally millions of stories. And most of them are never known because so many people didn't survive. And whether you survived or not was just total chance, flukes, really. And um, so Von der Linden um, and her husband, Raphael, did survive. And I've called this song This Golden Bracelet. And um, you'll find out why at the, at the very end of the song, which is my way of uh, saying, try and listen <laughs> through the song. But it is remarkable that it's totally true. Her hair was blonde, her eyes were blue You might not take her for a Jew But this is 1942 in Warsaw The fetid stench of Nazi power Was growing stronger hour by hour The ghetto was a prison now in Warsaw Fond of sisters and her cousins And her father and her mother Took the train like all the others out of Warsaw Not one of them was seen again She had no family now Just a man to survive Any way they can in Warsaw You have a choice They told her Yes, you are free to choose You can work for us now or we can put you on a train Like all those other Jews And so they worked In Schultz's factory For no pay And barely fed Making uniforms German army uniforms It was that or they'd be dead and now I wear this golden bracelet Engraved with her name It makes it like she's always near me Close at hand I wear it And I remember her Long ago In a far away land In 43 The ghetto was ablaze They bribed a guard and with fake papers, by some miracle, they escaped from Warsaw. For 14 months, they hid away, lying in a narrow roof space. Just one false move would give the game away. Then finally, the Russian forces rolled on in and won that war. They both ended up, long story short, in Melbourne. From the ashes, of the old world Warsaw the end of all they knew Across the ocean But all that water couldn't wash away the nightmares Of all that they'd been through And now I wear this golden bracelet Engraved with her name It makes it like she's always near me Close at hand I wear it And I remember her Long ago In a far away land A lifetime passes Seven decades The German government agrees to pay For all those years of forced labour in Warsaw The letter came through seven days after Vonda peacefully passed away at the tender age of 98 in Melbourne Seven decades to say sorry A few euros and a letter's all we get It's not much but it's enough for us each to buy something of gold so we won't forget And now I wear this golden bracelet 
Engraved with her name It makes it like she's always near me Close at hand I wear it And I remember her Long ago In a faraway land I wear it And I remember her The skull and bracelet. There's a little lovely little follow-up to that story. My friend Benjamin and his brother Stephen went back to Warsaw um, about oh, 10 or 15 years ago and they actually found the woman that gave them shelter in that roof space. Now she was amazing because she didn't tell her husband because he drank a little bit and he might have said something and she didn't tell her children because they were too young and they might have said something and there were Nazis based at the end of the street they lived in. And so for well over a year, she hid them up in this roof space, not an attic, just between the ceiling and the roof, and sent up a bucket each night, bring down the waste, send up food. Didn't tell a soul even in the household. And so they found her, it took a lot of research, but they found her, went to the house, and they actually got, got um, her onto the phone to their mother. It was the first time they had spoken since uh, the Russians came in and, and, the, and the war ended. So that's, I, I'm getting goosebumps now, just retelling that. I don't usually tell that little bit, but I just decided to today. And when they were coming back to Australia from Warsaw, they, they also stopped in uh, uh, yeah, at Israel and they started the process, which was eventually completed, of, of uh, having her declared a, a righteous Gentile, which is a, an award that, um, that Israel gives for people that have done that sort of thing. So it's a, it's a beautiful story. It's also a tragic story, as a lot of beautiful stories are. This next song's a beautiful story, too. Um, I actually haven't got any clue how much longer I've got in my set. Um, can anybody tell me? <laughs> I've got two, two more songs or two minutes? <laughs> two songs, OK. All right, well, I'll, oh yeah, I'll do this one. So this song, I wrote this song almost exactly a year ago. Um, after the, the festival here, I, I went off to the... Uh, up, up, to, up the road to Wando Vale, and there's sheepdog trials up there. And I've never been to sheepdog trials. And you know, this is the home of the Kelpie here. And um, so it was, it was a, a, an amazing day. I was absolutely enthralled. And just the dogs are so amazing. I'm not particularly a dog person, but they are just so brilliant and intelligent. And, and the, the owners, handlers, are also just as brilliant and intelligent. And the time they put in, the sheep are really stupid. Um, but that's half the fun of it. And um, the people were just absolutely lovely and the lunch that they put on was, was something else as well. So um, I um, basically went home and wrote this song. It's called The Wando Vale Annual Sheepdog Trial and it's got a bit for you to join in on. By the way, there's directions at the start of this song and um, they only apply to Victorians who are coming from the sort of Melbourne uh, direction. So just ignore the first couple of lines if you're from Adelaide or South Australia. You turn right off the highway, 20k past Coleraine. If you come to Casterton, you've gone too far. As you come over the hill, you see the cars parked by the hall. Just cross McPherson's Creek and there you are. The field is all set up, the obstacles and gates. And the dogs are sitting pretty as they wait. The first dog out to board across, Banjo is his name. He's crouched down ready, eyes fixed, tail out straight. Come on, get back, Stiddy, give me on, stand. Wait. Oh, wait a minute, give me on, stay. It's a bloody great way to spend a day. People come for miles to the Wando Vale Annual Sheepdog Trials And that's your bit To the Wando Vale Annual Sheepdog Trials yeah. There's Bozza, Blue Boy, Butch and Blaze And even one called Bruce There's Molly, Mindy, Chance and Tootles too They all go through their paces As each set of sheep set loose You'd be amazed at what those dogs can do. 
First they have to herd the sheep past where their handler stands Then back through a gap there in the fence Chase that sheep that's bolted, lead them up a ramp And then, with luck, they're in the pen It's sheer suspense Come by, get back, steady, come on, stand Wise Oh, wait a minute, come on, stand It's a bloody great way to spend the day People come for miles to the Wando Vale Annual Sheepdog Trials Give it a go! To the Wando Vale Annual Sheepdog Trials And in good time the word goes round It's time to have a break The ladies have been busy in the hall We all sit down for lunch Mmm, rissoles drowned in gravy and the highlight, flummery, cream and all. And the winner gets their name in gold up on the honour board. And you should see the prizes, oh, they're beaut. There's a handmade quilt for starters, and a canine grooming kit. And enough dog food to fill your Hilux ute. Come on, get back, steady, come on, stand. Why? Oh, wait a minute, come on! Stay! It's a bloody great way to spend the day People come for miles To the Wando Vale Annual Sheepdog Trials To the Wando Vale Annual Sheepdog Trials To the Wando Vale Annual Sheepdog Trials Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Well, I'm just going to do uh, one last song, and um, I really want to thank um, Gaz particularly for running this festival. Please give him a huge hand. I don't know if his, his, his Harley's over there, but uh, I'm not sure where he is. And uh, to the MCs and all the volunteers, it's a huge thing, putting up the tents and everything like that, setting it out. It's just amazing. And um, I, 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 as a performer, and I think I know all the performers are incredibly grateful for the work that everybody puts in, and, um, and all of you that come here. Now, I, I hear that most of you are going to Panola next weekend. Um, unfortunately, I, I was there the last one, but, um, well, not unfortunately, I'm not going to be there. I'm going to be playing at the Melbourne Ukulele Festival uh, next weekend, so that's going to be fun, but we can't be in more than one place at once, I think. So anyway, um, if you want to have a chat with me afterwards and maybe even consider getting my brand new album or uh, one of my seven previous albums or downloads or whatever you want, and I've got a songbook and I've got the works, really, just haven't got the steak knives and all that sort of thing but just come and have a chat with me afterwards over there I'd love to love to talk to you now I think what I'll do I'll swap hats I'll finish off with another one you can join in on and this is a song about beanies so I've got my beanie if you've got a beanie please pop it on if you haven't if you've got some other sort of hat make sure you've got it on and if you haven't got any hat at all um, just put on your imaginary hats <laughs> I love the Sanford volunteer hats, that's great. Give the Sanford volunteers a, a, a hat, a hand, a hand for their hat. <laughs> All right, so this song was inspired by a beanie festival, ultimately by the Alice Springs Beanie Festival, which is an absolutely a remarkable and wonderful event, but actually specifically by the Torquay Beanie Festival, which ran for a few years. And I was, I was asked to play at that and um, asked to write a song. And so, well, I thought I'd write a song called the Beanie Song. and. Um, so it's got a join in bit. This one, um, it's not so much the chorus where you sing along, it's a call and response thing. So I go, you gotta have a beanie, and you all go, you gotta have a beanie. And then I go, you gotta have a beanie, and you all go, you gotta have a beanie. And then I go, you gotta have a beanie, and then you all don't. All right, so that's the trick. <laughs> Way, way back around the dawn of time When humans stepped out of the primordial slime First they invented clothes, then they invented the hat Then someone said, you can do better than that You gotta have a beanie You gotta have a beanie You gotta have a beanie Put it on your head Yes, well, um, those extra enthusiastic people that did it the third time, I'm not going to say you're slow learners, it's just that you're extra enthusiastic, yeah? 
Well, you can make them out of polar fleece. You can make them out of wool. You can make them out of felt, which is really, really cool. You can knit them. You can weave them. They can even be crocheted. If you got yourself a beanie, you really got it made. You gotta have a beanie. You gotta have a beanie. You gotta have a beanie. Put it on your head. I don't adore a fedora. A trilby doesn't thrill me. A beret isn't very good compared to a beanie, a sombrero. I won't wear oh, a Panama's anathema. A turban so suburban compared to a beanie. You gotta have a beanie. Come on, you gotta have a beanie. Don't be distracted by that dog. You gotta have a beanie. I put it on your head. Well, if you've listened to my song and all the things that I have said, you get yourself a beanie and put it on your head. They're every shape and size, from a house to a zucchini, and an itsy bitsy teeny weeny yellow polka dot beanie. You gotta have a beanie. You gotta have a beanie. You gotta have a beanie. I put it on your head. Put it on your head. Put it on your head. Ladies and gentlemen, thank Bruce you so Watson. much.